I am not dangerous. I wasn't dangerous and I'm not dangerous. The vice rector of Istanbul University played a central role in enforcing the headscarf ban. She is Nur Surtur. It was not only a matter of headscarf. With the headscarf, many other things have started to take place in, uh, at, the, at the universities. For example, the students, they didn't want examinations or classes on Fridays. There are many mosques around Istanbul University, but students, instead of going to mosques, they wanted to do their praying at the corridors. And they published some uh, magazines saying that uh, they are coming to the university to fight for, for an Islamic state. So day by day, these demands increased. And of course, afterwards, some limitations uh, took place. <laughs> When the band started, I was in my fourth year of medical school. On that day, just as I went into class and sat in my chair, my teacher came over and told me I had to leave. For half an hour or so, I tried talking to him, but they called the police. They grabbed me and carried me out. The police moved in to break up the demonstrations. Islamic movement, in a way, follows the principle of identity movements that we observe in the West. That means, as a social movement, they don't want to be assimilated to the principles of Western modernity. They have said, no, we want to be even more Muslim than what you expect. You know, there is this kind of exaggeration of this Islamic identity that we see today. Islam want to be modern not in the Western way, but Islam. So they are trying to tell, tell us, like, black is a beautiful formula, Islam is beautiful, and trying to be a reference point in different sets of civilization. These women began to work for a human rights group, counseling other students caught in the same situation and campaigning against the headscarf ban. But rather than the ban being lifted, the headscarf became the focus of a political crisis. In 1999, Merve Kavaca, a 30-year-old U.S.-educated software engineer with dual U.S.-Turkish citizenship, was elected as a deputy for the Islamic Party. She had worn a headscarf throughout her campaign, but when she attended the swearing-in ceremony, the parliament erupted. Her fellow deputy was Nasli Ilicak. When we walked into the room, perhaps 120 deputies just uh, stand up and began to shout out to Merve Kavakça, out, out, out. After 45 minutes, recess was declared and Merve Kavakça was forced to leave the parliament building. Within two weeks, she was stripped of her Turkish citizenship. Two years later, her party was shut down. While we were filming in June of 2001, the Islamists were reforming into two parties, a traditional and a reform wing. This is the press conference of the traditionalists. And we want to listen to you know, what he says. Leading reformer Abdullah Gul has worked in Islamic politics for the last decade. Murat Marjan is his main advisor. I personally, you know, have to emphasize the fact that Islam can go along with democracy. And that is why we want to be very successful. If a Turkish example is not successful, I would say that Muslims will become more radicals. If you can't express yourself, your views, your values in a democratic way, how can else? Can you express them? The headscarf ban remains in force in Turkey today.